We we'll praise your name all the day long. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your word that has come forth. Thank you for enlightenment by your spirit. This morning, Lord, I pray that you speak through me as an oracle and minister life and faith to your children. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' matchless name, we we'll pray. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in God's wonderful presence. And thank you so very much, Pastor Ui. You know, you would have been, if you were in the first service, you probably would understand more as well. Two different teaching, you know, I mean, the same day. So quickly, I mean, we, 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 we I want to, you know, for, for the next few days, let's talk so very much about marriage. You know, because the truth is, there is no generation that's had an unhappy and broken marriage like our generation. There's no generation that's had it like our generation. And something must have been the cause, there must have been a reason for it. You know, a misunderstanding of a lot of things. And. Because a lot of people go into marriage not getting, understanding what it's about. Some people think marriage is about finding the right person. But the truth is, marriage is not about finding the right person. Marriage is about being the right person. So a lot of people have gone into marriage looking for the right person. So the first assignment is first for you to be the right person. If you want peace, someone that will give you peace in marriage. To someone that brings peace to marriage. A lot of people say, oh, I want, I mean, a generous person. But are you generous? I want a patient person. Are you patient? I want a kind person. Are you kind? Life attracts. And I, I want us to start it from that perspective and understanding, and have that understanding. Because the major challenge is as like the ability to stay tolerant. You know, there's that glue that used to keep marriage and glue marriage together is no longer there. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, especially in these days where you have, I mean, abusive men and women. You have abused people that are, you know, have abandoned their responsibilities. They're from people. And so we, we, we try to bring a lot of balance to this. There are men and women that are, you know, I mean, abandon their responsibility. Some that are abusive, you know. And we, we, we're going to look at all this. And so that you understand what marriage is. A lot of us don't understand that marriage, first and foremost, is a covenant. You know, it's God's idea. Adam didn't even know he needed a wife. He was just working. It was God that said, it is not good for a man to be alone. You know? I mean, so a lot of people are going through abuse. A lot of people are going through, you know, they are enduring what they shouldn't endure. And as I, from the very first go, what I'll say to young people, if you're not married, Marry someone that's under authority. Someone that somebody can speak to. Don't marry an authority. Do you know? A man is meant to be the head, not the headache. Some men are headache. And some women as well. Let's not go there. I mean, let's just begin to look, look into scripture. The Bible says in the book of Malachi verse, chapter 1, verse 16, it says, For the Lord, the God of Israel, seeth, he hated, put in away. For one covered violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit, that he deal not treacherously. You, know, you need to read Malachi and understand what Malachi is about. He says, the Lord God says he is putting away. Now, a lot of people, what, what you're bothered about is divorce. Divorce does not start in the day. Hello? The divorce is the fruit. Putting away is the root. It starts by putting away. You see, I mean, the couple have a little bit, bit of misunderstanding. And the next thing is to take it to the next level. They stop talking. For days, they refuse to talk to each other. 
they refuse to sleep on, in, in the same room. That is the start of putting away. It's not divorce yet. You know? The other condition will say it's divorce. But that's the start. It says, God says, he didn't say in the King James Version, I know other transition will tell you divorce. He says, God hates, he hates putting away. What you're meant to resolve, because if you stand by, you know, the standard of scripture, if you have a misunderstanding, what you're supposed to do is to settle it the same day. You see, Ephesians 4, uh, verse uh, 32. Let's, uh, you know, uh, from, no, from, no, from 26, let's read what scripture says. Ephesians 5, from verse Let's read from us. Yes. What did I say? Five, four. I'm sorry. Ephesians four. It says, from verse twenty-five. It says, wherefore, putting away lying. See the things that you're, you're meant to put away. It says, wherefore, putting away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Now, it says, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your rod. So you understand what to put away and what not to put away. A lot of us don't understand what we should not put away. And that's where it starts from. You must know what to put away. The Bible says, put away lying. There are some people, when they tell you it is, it is you know, I mean, it's raining outside. No, it is sunny. When I tell you, I, we really need to sit and visit this and talk about these things. Because this generation, you see, you have, un, I mean, broken homes, you have challenges in marriage, you, you have, I mean, uh, partners, you know, you, you know um, infecting their partners with, you know, diseases and with things that they didn't bargain for. It's wicked and ungodly. All just because we don't understand this. He says, the Lord God says, he hates putting away. And here he says, you can be angry. He says, but see not. Let not the sun go down on your rod. Let it, you know, you're angry, certainly the same. There's some people know how to hold it. You keep it. And until, you know, it explodes in your eyes. It, before you, and it costs a lot more trouble than you can bargain for. Learn to settle things. I know there are some terrible people. There are some terrible men. No matter what you say to them, it's what they want to do, they will do. There are some terrible women. No matter what you say to them, it's what they want to do that they will do. And I want us to begin to see these things and understand how to communicate in marriage and how to make these things work. It's, a lot of us have become so selfish. It's not for your benefit. It's for the benefit of the children. Some people are still listening, listening to me and they will still go back and still cheat in marriage. You know, there's something, you know, a lot of us don't understand marriage is the covenant. And a lot of us don't understand why God does not answer our prayer. Malachi 2 verse 13, if you can just go there quickly for me. Malachi 2 13. Are you there? It says, and this have you done again. I mean, this is someone that you, 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 you think is a believer, a righteous man. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears, weeping. There's this business. There's this contract. There's this thing. You're believing God. You're crying and you come to the altar of God. You know, crying and with crying out in so much that God regarded not the offering anymore. He does not regard. You come with seed. You come with millions. God is not interested in what you have to bring. He says he's no longer interested. He does not receive the offering regarded from you or receive it with goodwill at your hand. There's some offerings that some of us put in, in the house of God. You know, it's nothing to God. It's a waste. Listen, there's some offerings, some tithes, some things you give in the house of God is a waste. And you don't understand why. And the Bible says, let's, let's continue. This is the reason why God does not, you know, we don't get anything from God. He says, yet you say, where of? Why? Why is this happening? Because the Lord has been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet she is thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. You know, a lot of us don't understand what covenant is. 
We don't understand covenant. Covenant comes with commitment. Covenant comes with commitment. Marriage is a covenant. You just don't make those vows for making vows sake. You must sit up and decide. You see, you open yourself. You open yourself up for danger and for manipulation of the devil when you begin to break this covenant. It's not the same thing as fornication. Yes, they're both sins. But this covenant you're breaking. All the parties that are involved will show up and will fight against you. God says, the reason I'm not answering your prayer, I was part of the covenant. I was there when you made the vow. That's what that scripture is saying. And now you are breaking it. You're dealing with your wife treacherously. It's not just the man. The women as well. How are you dealing with your partner? There are some reasons why some things don't come to you. And it doesn't matter how much you pray. You don't get results. And some of us, we get results and before we know what's happening, it is gone because we don't understand what marriage is. Praise God. Don't understand that you have to work marriage for it to work. You know, the biblical attitude in marriage is meant to be, what can I give and not what can I get? A lot of people come into marriage and it's all about what they can get. What can I get from it? That's not it. It's all about, just imagine that everyone comes and everyone is just willing to give. It's all about what I can give, what the other person can give. It would work. It takes every covenant requires sacrifice. Every covenant requires sacrifice. How much of sacrifice are you willing to put? You know, listen, I always like bringing a balance to it because there are some people that, you know, they are just, I don't know where, 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 where they've come from. You know, they are, in short, it's difficult to live with. I can understand. And if you're a man or a woman like that, the first thing you need to do, you know, is to sit down and introspect. Examine yourself. Stop pointing fingers. A lot of people know how to, they know how to blame others, but don't know how to look inward. You hear the word of God every time. You come to church every time. You're living per perpetually in fornication, in adultery. And you're married. You say, oh, Pastor, it's my weakness. It's not a weakness. We know the things that are weakness. These are, it's my weakness, Pastor. You must understand it's weakness. I, I don't know. No, no, no. It's not a weakness. It's not a weakness. When we talk about weakness and, 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 and temptation, Sometime soon. But I, I, want us to really, I, I want to really get us to that place where we understand what we are doing, what this is about. Marriage is going to be tested like every other thing, like I always say, it will always be tested. It will be tested. Your marriage is going to be tested. Some of us, you know, we've gotten into a wrong union. I can understand. And it's only by prayers that God can help us. Some people are in the wrong union. Wrong. It's only by prayers. If that man does not believe in the same thing you believe, does not see the things, see the way you see, and that's why, like I was saying last week, the standard is meant to be the word of God. You know, I mean, we are progressing to become one. The Bible says in the book of Genesis 2, verse 24, it says, for this cause shall the man leave the, 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 the father and the mother. So there, there has to be a living. You see, the priority of marriage is Living, I, I've, I've taught this before, but I think I have to revisit it. The priority of marriage, it says, for this cause shall a man, Genesis 2, 24, it says, for this cause shall a man live. That is the priority. If, you know, there has to be a living. You have to cut your ties with everything, whether it's family, and this is something new that is starting. A lot of people have not cut themselves off family in the sense, I'm not saying you are not going to be close to your family. I'm not saying, you know, of course, I mean, it takes a community to build what we're talking about. But first and foremost, there has to be a separation. Your parents can no longer be dictating for you or to you. Advice is general. They can give advice. But decision must be personal to you and your wife. 
You're making decisions. It must be personal to you and your wife. Nobody else should make decisions for you. Some of us, it's not even our, our parents. It's our friends. But your wife is talking to you like that. How can? And you allow, him, allow her to talk to you like that? Oh, is that what your husband is doing? He says, for this cause shall a man live. That is a priority. If you are not ready to live, and when we talk about living, we're talking about geographical living. If you're still living in your father's house, you have no business of getting married. You don't have business in getting married to anybody. If you're still living, there has to be a, that's the priority. You're still so much attached to your people, to your family. The Bible says, for this cause shall a man live, that's the priority. And shall cleave. The reason why there is no cleaving is because there is no living for so many people. If you have not left, there can be a cleaving. So first, there has to be a living. But some of us know, though some of our family members are far off. But you know what? You can see that they are still dictating from how many thousands of miles away. They are still dictating, telling you, I mean, this, this, this bit is so important. I expect men especially, I need to speak to you. Learn to protect your wife. Learn to protect them. If they've made a mistake, yes, you deal with it in the bedroom, just you and your wife. Learn to protect. Any small thing, you've exposed them. You know, and you see, as you tell these things to family members, you might come back together, but they will never forget. And most of the time, they never forgive. Learn to keep it. If you cannot tell your pastor or someone that can forget, see, there's some things that you must get to a place where you know that there's nothing else that we can do before you begin to introduce it to family. He says, for this cause, and the man leave, that's the priority. And it's a cleave. That's the permanence. Cleaving shows the permanence of marriage. That's, what, that's God's plan. The permanence of it. He wants it to be permanent. It says, answer, and they shall become one flesh. That's the purpose of marriage. To become one. I said it's a journey to oneness, not sameness. It's a journey. Marriage is a journey. So understand, I want us to understand this, that as we go, you know where you are. You know your role. You know, you know what to do. Because, yeah, I want us to understand, because one of the challenges we have is communication. In marriage, a lot of us don't know how to communicate. We just, you need, before you get married, you must learn communication. If you don't know how to communicate, you don't have a business getting married. Because it's not about communication. The only reason you're married in the first place is because you communicated to your wife and said, I will marry you. Or whether your wife communicated to you, so there was a communication anyway, that and now you're married. And now you're married. And it's so important you understand that you must communicate. Don't keep the other person quiet. Talk. You're upset about the thing. I mean, I don't have a problem with you being upset. The Bible doesn't have a problem with you, be, with you being angry. But it's how you undo your anger. It says, be angry, but sin not. Don't be angry and start calling your partner names. The wife, the mother of your children, you're calling her a prostitute. The father of your, of your, of your children, calling, her, calling him mad, crazy, calling him an idiot and all. I mean, what kind of prophet are you? Prophesying what? We need to wake up. Some, some of us are here. You know, and sincerely, if we really want to break these things down, first and foremost, you need, you know, to, to get born again. To re- Some of us, are not, we are not Christians. Huh? We come to church. Trust me, we are not Christians at all. We just come to church. That's the reason why you can do the things you're doing. That's why it is so convenient for you to do the things you're doing. And I pray for you, if you are in this place, whether man or woman, you are cheating. You know, you're breaking a very strong covenant. You're setting yourself against God and opening yourself up to the devil. It's a covenant. I mean, do you know what? I mean, we all have contracts here, whether it's we, E, E, we three, or whatever. 
you try break your covenant, your your contract. Don't pay one month or two months, you know. And after a while, check your credit rating. You check it, you know. And after a while, if they still tell you you have to, you know, you've not paid and you refuse to pay, the bailiff will come. You're opening yourself, exposing yourself. So why do you want to expose your family that way? Praise the Lord. You know, I, I just want to start us this way to understand that, you see, marriage, it, every great marriage starts like a seed. And the way we plant it and we manage it is what is so important. And, and that's where I sincerely really want to take us to like, understand how to communicate, how to relate with one another. Men need to learn how to praise their wife. If you read the Proverbs, there's one woman. You know, you, you'll, see, you'll see some things. You'll see what the woman, I'm going to talk about the role, probably might not be able to talk about that, the role of a woman and the role of a, a, a man in marriage. You know, Bible talks about that. It says, the ch- our children will call her blessed. Proverbs 31, 28. Say, and our husband will praise her. A lot of men, when last did you praise your wife? All you know how to do is that, ah, there's too much salt in this room. Oh, you don't. And for our, our women as well, how many of you know how to encourage your husband? The Bible calls you a helper. There are two people qualified in Scripture to be helpers that are called helpers, the woman and the Holy Spirit. The woman and the Holy Spirit. How much, do you know, no matter how much I preach here, if you like, come and tell me, oh, it was a powerful message. If my wife says, mm, it wasn't that, that's the end of it for me. It doesn't matter how much you say it's a powerful message. That's it. I have to sit down again and say, okay, you know. And she would, she would have to tell me, if she does not say anything, of course she knows, I'll be looking for a way to like, ah, ah. so I won't look and see if I should be asking God, God, is it good? Yes. But I need... You need, every man needs that encouragement, that backing for your husband to become something. You need that backing. Don't stop being an odious woman, the Bible says. A woman that, you know, some, some people have very stinking personality. Difficult to be with. Don't be that kind of a person. Be the person that encourages your husband or your wife to success. He fails and comes back home to you. You're saying, yeah, I mean, oh man, you, you did a great job. I mean, we can, we can still do it. Go for it. He comes back again. Keep pushing. So men, does not, they don't understand when they push. When your wife is pushing, you understand as well. Some of us, we need a lot of push. And your husband is trying to push you. Or your wife is trying to push you. You don't understand. You think he's being critical. Try to examine yourself. A lot of us, we need to do an audit, a serious audit about our lives. We need to do a very serious one. Praise the Lord. You know, like I've always said, marriage will never leave you the same. It will never leave you the same. It will stretch you. I mean, I saw a lady I was looking at. I saw her before picture and the picture after three children. I was like, how? You know, what happened to this lady? Marriage has stretched her. Has pushed her. Physically, it is showing you know, and that's why you have to respect women. You need to praise them. You need to praise them. <laughs> you know, sincerely, you need to learn to praise them. Just say something good. In the morning, you wake up. Wow, baby, you're looking good. You know, wow, thank you for being a great mother. Some people, when last have you told your wife, I love you? Somebody said, but you should know that I love you. I mean, I said it once. <laughs> When we got married, is that not enough? What else do you need? I say, if I don't love you, would I be in this house? <laughs> yeah, we'll take, we'll, we'll send Sister Jennifer somewhere. You know? Sincerely, if you know what I mean, I mean, say it, talk to them. Let them feel good. It's not only when they make mistakes that you tell. Let's read that scripture again. Proverbs 
um, 31, 28, is it? It says, our children arise and call her blessed. Our husband, and our husband also, and he praised her. Although not for some of us. You need to be sincere with yourself. When last did you praise your wife or say something good to your wife or to your husband? Well, I know, I know some of us are in some very difficult relationship. You know, the person has pushed you. you know, I like bringing balance because, I mean, I've counseled some things and I'm like, I, in short, you don't even know where from scripture to start counseling from. You know? But listen, you have to make up your mind that you want to make this thing to work. You really want to make this thing to work. And understand that you don't marry because it's convenient. Some people marry because they think it's convenient. That's not the reason. If you're in this place, it's not going to. It's a, it's, it's a covenant, and you it will require sacrifice. You're helping your partner. It does not mean you know. I mean, you don't need help yourself. Don't think you're better than anybody. You're not better. You probably are the only one that is working, and your partner is not working. It does not make you better. If you see that you can pay a woman, you know. I don't believe in any woman being a housewife. Even the one that is not working. There's no woman that is a housewife. You know what it takes to, to you pay somebody that will take care of your children. Not from nine to six. Feed them, cook for them, you know, drive them, and just cost it and see how much it will cost. It's a partnership. So don't think she's a housewife. She's a house manager. That's who she is. Don't treat her like a noble. Just those little things that you see. The same thing with your husband. He goes, goes, goes out and he comes back. And no matter how small it is, that, that the fact that he brings in something, even if you earn more than him, appreciate it. Thank God for the fact that he has a job. Be thankful. Be thankful. You don't marry because it's convenient. You don't marry because it's comfortable. You don't marry because you're capable. No, that's not how you, why you marry. You marry because you're convinced. It's a covenant. You have to be convinced. The day you said, I do. Marriage is for two people that have decided that we have come into this to cover weaknesses and to emphasize strength. You are in that marriage to cover the, the weakness of your partner. That's what you are in need for. We, it, everyone, there's no perfect man here or perfect woman here. There is nobody that is perfect. You're meant to be covering. There's no boss. Listen. Understand this. We talk about how that the man is the head. And understand why God made the man the head. He's just majorly for direction, for guidance. You know, like in a ship or in a plane, you can have 20 pilots flying, but there's only one or two that will be in charge. The rest of them would have to sit down and watch the other one pilot. No matter how much you think you're good. So, in hierarchy, the man is the head. In equality, they are the same. The man is not better than the woman. And the woman is not better than the man. Understand that. But God has made you the head for a reason. Don't look down on your wife or your husband and treat them badly. Some of us don't know how to talk. The way you, you must learn. That's the first thing that you have to breathe to. Your tongue in marriage. It's not everything that comes to your head that you say. And that's how I just, in my mind now, that's how I'm saying it. You don't, don't say it eyes in your mind. First, align it to scripture. Is it Colossians 4 verse 6? Let's, 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 let's read that. Because one of the things that I'll take us time, I'm talking generally today because I want to take us, take time to really, you know, 
take us through this marriage crossing and put us in the place where we are good. A lot of us are putting away. Eventually, it will lead to divorce. We have started putting away. And God says, I hate putting away. The wife can't correct you. He can't tell you, you know, you don't take correction. Your husband can't correct you. Even if they are wrong, just listen. Colossians 4 verse 6, look at what scripture says. It says, let your speech always be with grace. Season with salt. I, I say it this way. Taste what you're giving out. If I come to your house and the food is salty, would you give it to me? You won't. You first need to taste it. Ah, this food is salty. If you taste your words, you'll be careful how you dole it out. How you give it out. You know, and understand, I mean, when you are in an abusive relationship and you do nothing, it will continue like that. And you'll be unhappy all the rest of your life. If, if you don't want to talk to pastor, you don't want to talk to anybody, you need to get that thing. Don't, it's not something you hide. Get it to people you can trust. Sit down and say, I can't take this anymore. You know, but the first thing is look at yourself. Look at yourself. If you're in this place, you're not married. Please, marry someone that fears God. Someone that is under authority. Someone that God knows. Like I say, don't marry someone that knows God. Marry someone that God knows. They are two different things. Because God says that day, I will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I know you not. But that person says, I, well, I know you. I cast out devils in your name. Marry someone that God knows. You've been in this thing. Are you willing to make this work? Because we're going to be praying. Am I sincere? Sincerely, in this generation, you know, there's so much that, just for time, that I really would have loved us to talk about. Because I know that lo loads of people are going through things. Some of us don't have what we call patience. We are not tolerant. You know, we don't know how to talk. We don't know how to behave. We don't know how to. In scripture, it says, for your prayers to be answered. You know, the way you deal, you treat your wife determines how your prayers are answered. Apart from Malachi, if you think, some of us say it's Old Testament, it's Old Testament scripture. Huh? First Peter 3, verse 7, if you put that up for me. You know, and the Bible expects that to be considerate. First Peter 3, 7, it says, likewise, he husband, and I like, I like the King James translation, he says, dwell with them according to knowledge. Says, dwell with your wife according to... He didn't say according to understanding. Some translation says understanding, but this is the right rendering. He says, dwell with them according... Just know your own wife. And dwell with your wife the way you know her. Don't try to understand. You know, some people say, no, no. I just want to understand how you think. The Bible says, don't understand. He says, dwell with them according to knowledge. Giving honor to your wife as unto the weaker vessel. You know, they might be weaker physically, but not weaker mentally or spiritually. In short, most of the time, check around very well. You see that the women are more spiritual. They are, more, they are, more, they are stronger, you know, spiritually. The Bible is talking about physically weaker vessels. And as being else to get out of the grace of life, that your prayers be not what? In that. I mean, don't you know the reason why your prayers are in that? If you are at peace in your family with your wife, you will go farther than where you are. The Bible says, he that finds a wife, finds good and obtains favor from the Lord. But at the same time, women, you know, some, some of them need laying of hands. Maybe that's what we, we, we do. Praise the Lord. It is. The Bible says, a wise woman builds our own house. So the building of a house is the responsibility of a wise woman. Hello? Is that in your scripture? That a wise woman builds her own house. 
when the house is falling apart, what are you doing? You are meant to be the one building, not the one breaking. I want to stand up on our feet, everyone. You know, we don't have the time today. I, I, I'm going to be going to pray for the children. We don't have the time, but by God's grace, we'll, next week, we're still going to be doing this. We have some other things we're going to be doing next week, but we're going to be doing this. And we're going to do this teaching and begin to pray until our marriages are healed. If you're in this place and you're cheating on your wife or your husband, desist from it. You're sowing a seed that you don't want to reap. Just imagine somebody doing the same thing to your daughter. Or say, oh, I don't have daughters. And you know what I discover? Most women tend to want to marry somebody like their father. And most men, people, you know, uh, like their mother. Is this for me? You're in a covenant. Make up your mind. If it's the other person doing it, how would you feel? So my father say we are, we are Christians, we are stupid. But, you know, I want you to bow down your head and talk to God about your marriage. Talk to God about yourself. Look at yourself. If you're not married, the same way, how are you treating your partner? How are you treating your partner? Have you truly sincerely looked at yourself? Are you putting away? Now, put these things in perspective and understand that you're putting away. And be sincere with yourself. Your prayers are being in that. You have some, some levels of success. But it's not enough. God wants to do even much more than you, where you are right now. Why don't you just make, make up your mind and decide for God to help you? For God to help you. Marriage is, is, is a covenant and the attempts and conditions that God expects that you will live by. Faithfulness is one of them. and just talk to him much. And I don't want you to raise up your hand anywhere you are. But you want to agree with me. You know. You are breaking the covenant of your marriage. And whether you are a woman as well, there are some. You are breaking the covenant of your marriage through adultery. I need to just, just repent and tell God Help me. Forgive me. You're in this place as well. You're wicked to your partner. You know you're wicked. No honor for your wife. No respect for your husband. You're in this place. I want you to, be, to repent now and say, I will not talk to her like I used to talk to her. No matter what happens, I will not talk to him like I used to talk to him. Help me manage my anger. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your children. Whatever state that you're in, for men in this place, that are breaking the terms and condition of their marriage. 
I pray let them meet with you. For men that are physically, emotionally abusive to their wives, by the God that you would meet with them. I pray for the marriages in this place, for healing. No matter what has happened in the past, healing. For healing, for all marriages, under the sound of my voice, healing I pray for, in the name of Jesus, that you touch their marriages, and you heal them permanently, to the praise and glory of your name. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen.